Hi, it's Miss Saxon and I look a little different. I'm in a book. So this is a new video technique that I am learning and I thought it might be cool to see the pages really big and see a little tiny Miss Saxon. So I hope you like this and this book is special because we're trying to focus on the IB learner profiles each month and September is caring. And I think this book really shows a lot of empathy and compassion for someone else even when it's something that you might want. And so I hope you enjoy this book and I hope you like the new video technique. Thank you. Those Shoes by Mary Beth Bolts, illustrated by Noah Z. Jones. I have dreams about those shoes. Black high tops, two white stripes. Grandma, I want them. There's no room for want around here. Just need, Grandma says, and what you need are new boots for winter. Brandon T. comes to school in those shoes. He says he's the fastest runner now, not me. I was always the fastest before those shoes came along. Nate comes to school in those shoes. Antonio and I count how many times Nate goes to the bathroom. Seven times in one day just so he can walk up and down the hall real slow. Next, Alan Jacoby and Terrence each get a pair. Then one day in the middle of kickball, one of my shoes comes apart. Looks like you could use a new pair, Jeremy, Mr. Alfrey, the guidance counselor says. He brings out a box of shoes and other stuff he has for kids who need things. He helps me find the only shoes that are my size. Velcro, like the ones my little cousin Marshall wears. They have an animal on them from a cartoon I don't think any kid has ever watched. When I come back to the classroom, Alan Jacoby takes one look at my Mr. Alfrey shoes and laughs. So does Terrence, Brandon T, and everyone else. The only kid who isn't laughing is Antonio Parker. At home, Grandma says, how kind of Mr. Alfrey. And I turn my back. I'm not gonna cry about any pair of shoes. But when I'm writing my spelling words later, every word looks like shoes. And my grip is so tight on my pencil, I think it might bust. On Saturday, Grandma says, let's go check out those shoes you're wanting so much. I got a little bit of money set aside. Might be enough, you never know. At the store, Grandma turns those shoes over so she can check the price. When she sees it, she sits down heavy. Maybe they wrote it down wrong, I say. Then I remember the thrift shops. What if there's a rich kid who outgrew his or got two pairs for Christmas and had to give one away? We ride the bus to the thrift shop. Black cowboy boots, pink slippers, sandals, high heels, every kind of shoe except the ones I want. We ride the bus to the second thrift shop. Not a pair in those shoes in, of those shoes in sight. Around the corner is the third thrift shop and I see something in the window. Black shoes with two white stripes, high tops, perfect shape, $2.50. Those shoes. My heart is pounding hard as I take my shoes and hitch up my baggy socks. <gasps> How exciting, Grandma says. What size are they? I shove my foot into the first shoe, curling my toes to get my heel in. I don't know, but I, I think they'll fit. Grandma kneels on the floor and feels for my toes at the end of the shoe. Oh, Jeremy, I can't spend good money on shoes that don't fit. I pull the shoe on and I try to walk around. They're okay, I say, holding my breath and praying that my toes will fall right off then and there, but my toes don't fall off. I buy them anyway with my own money and I squeeze them on and limp to the bus stop. At home, a few days later, grandma puts a new pair of snow boots in my closet and doesn't say a word about my big feet shuffling in my tiny, too small shoes. Sometimes shoes stretch, I say, and Grandma gives me a hug. I check every day, but those shoes don't stretch. 
I have to wear my Mr. Alfreys to school instead. One day during math, I glance at Antonio's shoes. One of them is taped up and his feet look smaller than mine. After school, I head to the park to think. Antonio's there, the only kid who didn't laugh at my Mr. Alfred's shoes. We shoot baskets. A loose piece of tape on Antonio's shoes smacks the concrete every time he jumps. I think I'm not going to do it. We leap off the swings. I'm not going to do it. We race from one end of the playground to the other. I'm not going to do it, I say. Do what, Antonio says, breathing hard. Grandma calls me for supper and invites Antonio over too. After supper, he spies my shoes. How come you don't wear them, Antonio asks. I shrug, my hands are sweaty. I can feel him wishing those shoes were his. That night, I'm awake for a long time thinking about Antonio in those shoes one last time. Before I can change my mind, the shoes are in my coat. Snow is beginning to fall as I run across the street to Antonio's apartment. I put the shoes in front of his door, push the doorbell and run. At school, Antonio is smiling big in his brand new shoes. I feel happy when I look at his face and mad when I look at my own Mr. Alfrey shoes. But later when it's time for recess, something happens. Everywhere there's snow. Leave your shoes in the hall and change into your boots, your teacher announces. Leave your shoes in the hall. It's then I remember what I have in my backpack. New boots, new black boots that no kid has ever worn before. Standing in line to go to recess, Antonio leans forward and says, thanks. I smile and give him a nudge. Let's race. So that story I think is really sweet because that boy really wanted those shoes for himself, but he knew that he didn't need them and they just didn't work for his feet and Antonio could really use them. So I think that's a, a good lesson. You know, there's a phrase that we say sometimes about put yourself in someone else's shoes. And so literally he gave his shoes to someone else because he did, he put himself in Antonio's shoes and how he felt having old worn out shoes with tape on them. And he knew he could do something to make it better for him. So I hope that you'll find opportunities that you can show compassion and show caring. And I hope you enjoyed this book. Thank you.